I am welcoming you in the capacity of the assistant dean of studies since this is uh, an academic engagement. I have welcomed the key speaker, Honorable Odonga Uto. So at this juncture, I welcome the, the Honorable to come and first of all, he will introduce himself to us and then give his presentation. My name is uh, Odonga Oto. Uh, let me take these two minutes to introduce myself. Professionally, my first degree is in political science. My second degree is in law. Uh, my third degree, which is a master's degree, is in law. And the current degree I'm pursuing is a PhD in philosophy. I've been a member of parliament for 20 years until I successfully lost the last election. I'm very grateful to a lot of the national major seminary leadership that accorded me an opportunity to make this presentation. I run an organization called Breaking the Chains Africa. It is an advocacy, a think tank organization that generates ideas that can enable Africans break the chain. There are several chains to be broken, and today we are just going to delve in the in one aspect of religion. I, I make several publications. You can check uh, my YouTube channel. I've published incredible and thought-provoking ideas on 22 topics so far. I have done something on HIV AIDS in the African continent. You will follow those videos. You will not believe what you will hear. I've done something about slave trade. I've done something about colonial justice system why the prisons in Africa are more full than those ones in Europe because we adopted a law which is not in line with our cultures. I've done something about IMF and the World Bank, how the structural adjustments in the African continent has done us more harm than good. I've done something about wars in Africa, tracing all the wars and the number of human beings that have died and how that is the best business for some people in Europe. They smile all the way to the bank. I even brought very controversial ideas that Americans, when they, are, when, they are, when they are beginning to fight, they say, we are going to war. They go somewhere and fight. They don't fight in their country. It should be very interesting for philosophers and theologians. I've also done something about uh, imperialism, slave trade, and, if you, and false teeth. The biggest thing that is now killing Africans is malaria and new natural teeth. Uh, it is something which is not researched in the African medical educational system and yet many, we lose 11,000 infants every year, notwithstanding the fact that we have cure for malaria. So if you check on my YouTube channel, you will find a lot of ideas. We can continue the discussion there. So to begin my discussion tonight, first of all, I am so privilege to be talking to people who are studying philosophy. I've been given a topic uh, to discuss about religious extremism in the African continent. You all know what religion is. I'm not going to delve into that. But we have to make a distinction between belief and faith. Belief is a set of propositions. And faith is holding to those propositions. One philosopher said, religion without knowledge is bliss. I have explored the four major world religions because I don't want us to get involved in what I prefer to call academic bigotry. So bigotry is the capacity not to understand the other person's point of view. So we should avoid academic bigotry at this particular point. So I'm exploring very briefly the four major religions in the world. Hinduism has existed now for 4,000 years. 
And as major seminarians and people who are going to send gospel, the gospel to everyone in the world, you should not only look at Christianity. It's better we first see what those people believe in and why they believe in it. I am personally a believer, I'm a Christian, and I believe in God. So much as my ideas would be to provoke thoughts, it should not in any way be linked to paganism or atheism. Hinduism is 4,000 years old and it has 900 million followers. It is a family of religions. It is a way of life. It is not a single organized religion like Christianity. They worship a single God. For the purpose of this discussion, every God I put my hand like this is the God with the capital G. They worship a single God called Braham, but they also recognize that there are other gods and goddesses. And their doctrine, the, the doctrine and the philosophy of Hinduism is what they call Brahman. And the doctrine, they believe that life is in a cycle. You are born, you live, you die. They believe in the doctrine of karma, that if you do good, good will catch up with you. So that is the philosophy of uh, the Hinduism religion. And they all plead for good conduct and morality. Because Hinduism believes in reincarnation, that life continues. You reincarnate, life continues through your children, through your siblings. Most of them are vegetarians. Your life in this form may be a, a, a human being, but in the next form, Hinduism states you can be a cow, you can be a goat. That is why they have in their religious systems made it practically impossible to eat cow, because you cannot eat one of your own. Now, this debate, we can have it for the whole week. Should we eat meat or should we not eat meat? It's a question of personal belief. Christianity, we all know the life of Jesus Christ, a God made man who came to earth, and uh, the Trinity, we believe the belief system is well defined. The next religion, the third religion, is Islam. I told you earlier that Hinduism was, is 4,000 years old. That means Christianity came to this planet slightly after Hinduism had already existed for 2,000 years old. Very strange. Then after Christianity, around 610 AD, after Christ, another religion emerged called Islam. The entire Islam religion, if you can even observe from their dress code, is founded in the Arabian Peninsula in Mecca. It is very strange that many foreign religions in Africa, they also bring in their dress code. The, 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 the dress code of cassock, turban in the head is about the hot weather in, in the desert that you should really avoid losing a lot of heat as much as you can. But uh, strangely also the dress code has been imported into the uh, African continent. About 20 years ago, my faith, the Catholic Church, through the Vatican had a huge debate how to Africanize and inculturalize the Christian religion to the extent that now we can even bring offertory in, the, in traditional African attire. Every religion has to adapt itself to reality, otherwise the religion will wither away from the face of the planet. I'll come to that. Booming trade business in Mecca, the rich had become so rich, there were so much intertribal and intercultural cattle raids, and Mecca was a city that was flourishing and destined to succeed, but there was need to regulate the excesses of the rich. That is how a prophet emerged, Prophet Muhammad, around 1610 AD. The message from God came to Prophet Muhammad in a very painful and spiritual and reaching manner that Prophet Muhammad took 23 years, 23 years writing the Quran. And like for us Christians that were given 10 commandments in the Torah, the Muslim Quran took 23 years for Prophet Muhammad to, 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 to transcribe it and bring it in that form. And uh, the Quran, unlike the Bible, is a little poetic and instructive. The Bible is narrative, it's a partial narrative of the life of, 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 of Jesus. If you... Now the philosophy of uh, Islam is akin to that of Christianity. 
Actually, researchers have shown that Islam and Christianity probably a thousand years ago were all the same. You find Abraham, Jacob, and all those, all those prophets. Gabriel getting into the Quran. They, it's a religion founded on patriarchy. If someone is established, you must listen to, to, to that established person. And it's also uh, a religion that exists. The fourth and last type of religion that exists is the African traditional religion. This is the religion that has suffered the biggest massacre since human civilization started. The first massacre was by imperialism, colonialism. The flag follows the cross. The white man did not only bring British colony in Uganda, they also brought religion into the African continent. Before they came, the Africans had their traditional way of worship. Over the 120 years of Christianity, the African traditional religion has been criminalized. It has been vindicated to the extent that today, if you tell anyone that you are an African traditional religious believer, people would think you are a witch. And then we have the word witch doctor. I wonder how you can be a witch and a doctor at the same time. And the white man is very intelligent. Other than bringing in the imperialism colonization, they brought religion and they brought their medicine. So even the space for traditional African medicine men to rise up and do something has also been related to witchcraft. To the extent that traditional African med medical research collapsed, but the African traditional religion exists. It is recognized by our laws, like in Uganda, we allow three or four kinds of marriages. You can marry under the marriage of the Traditional Africans Act, which I am married under that. I am yet to be married under the Christian <laughs> faith. You should talk to me about that. The Father is here, you should please, you, after this you make me get a day. But it has disadvantages and advantages. Marriage under the, uh, the, 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 the Christian faith is monogamous, full stop. Marriage under the African Traditional Act is potentially polygamous. But I'm still in a monogamous marriage, so I have no fears whatsoever getting into uh, the church marriage. But that religion has been fought and is almost obliterated from the first place of the from the face of the continent. Now let's pause a minute. Given the four religions that have been produced, this is the distribution of, of, of population. Of this is the distribution of human beings in this planet according to religion. The Christians are 2.38 billion. It's the biggest religion on the planet. The Muslims are 1.91 billion. Then Hinduism, 1.16 billion. And then you can add the others, which includes the traditional African religion. Now, having brought that background, of course, under Christianity, there is a lot of debate. We can take the whole week, but let me touch a little bit. Christianity derived their philosophy and doctrine from the life of Christ. And in my opinion, Jesus Christ lived a very incredible life that any human being should feel worthy of following. Very unique practices they exhibited. Happy are the poor. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> I can pull down this temple and build it in three days. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The philosophy of Jesus Christ at the time the Roman Empire was at its peak was close to treason at that particular time. And he showed human beings that there is life after here. The oldest gospel, you know, I think should be marked. They all wrote incredible stories about the life of, of, of Jesus. But along the way, around 1517, problem started. The Christians, one philosopher, theologian called Martin Luther, not King, Martin Luther King was named after the first philosopher around 1517 started protesting the Catholic faith 
That is now how we have the Protestants emerging out of Christianity. They all believe in Christ. They were protesting several things like the sole authority of papacy. And now if we want to make a quick distinction between the Catholics like you and me and the Anglicans and Protestants, is for them they have more of the Calvinist philosophy. Happy are the poor. Theirs is the, theirs is the kingdom of God. For the Protestants and Anglicans, their philosophy seems to think the kingdom of God begins from here. So the way they treat material things is quite different from the way the Catholics treat material things. You will not find any Anglican and Protestant religious establishment well properly run like the Catholic establishment. Because ours, there's a sense of posterity. In the Anglican, there is a sense of now and agency. Celibacy. <laughs> yeah, now and agency. Celibacy. The Catholic, we have believed, many of you who serve Christ should live a celibate life. The Anglican and Protestants have said they don't believe in, 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 in celibacy. So it probably also explains why certain institutions are more organized than the other. When we get church offertory, we take it to orphanages, we take it to schools, we take it to libraries. And when the other one gets those offertories, you have to think of a commerce for your spouse. So the priorities tend to be adjusted on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm not going to get to that because at the end of the day, we are all African. So that is the departure. And there are many other churches, the Orthodox Christians, the what kind of Christians. As of now, I have personally lost count philosophically and ideologically on how many churches exist in Africa. And Africa is so wide. I don't know how many churches now exist in Uganda. Uganda is a little bit so wide. I don't know how many churches exist in Gulu, district and city, with clearly defined philosophy and theology. I took one year in Spain. So the last time I went to check our home in Areaga, I drove from town at Hol Rosary Parish. My OB is doing good pastoral work there. After Hol Rosary, I branch to the post office next to Human Rights Focus, opposite the district council, there is a church. I went to corner Kidgum. This road heads to Patiku, the other one to Kidgum. There is another church. It was on a Sunday. I branched reaching Ariaga next to my home. There are three churches. In a distance of 11 kilometers, I find six religious sects. So what are the extremes of religion in the African continent? There are several extremes. The first, God has been politicized. In the minds of those using religion for those purposes, God has been politicized. You'll find there are people fighting religious wars in the name of God. Boko Haram, in West Africa, unbelievable. Al Shabaab, Lord's Resistance Army of Joseph Coyne. Name them. Since when did God become violent? So God has been militarized in the African continent. I will tell you the experience in Europe, Saturday. It's totally different from what is happening here. So the militarization of God, the politicization of God in the African continent are extremes of religion. How can God have a political party? How can God have a color? How can God be yellow or blue? How? The second extreme, the religious extreme of religion in the continent is that we have created personal gods. There is an author who wrote a whole dissertation on personal gods. I'll check through my, my book and I'll give you the exact name. He did extensive work that God has been personalized to the extent that if I have a problem with you, I can even say my God will punish you as if my God is different from yours. <laughs> this is weird. 
You have someone's debt, you don't want to pay. You fight someone, you don't want to be remorseful, and you say God will punish you. So the personalization of God in the African continent have gone to the extreme. I guess many of you are lords. In a joint traditional families, we had tribe in every family. Abila. Every family had a tribe. We thank Christianity that came and helped us to destroy those tribes. Why? African traditional religion was, was that we worship several gods. Christianity brought the as aspect of monotheism as opposed to polytheism. To that extent, I would praise with fine hands the aspects of uh, Western religion. But the point I'm driving here is there is the aspect of the personal of personal gods. You are having land disputes with a neighbor. Each one laments and says their god will ensure the other god would kill those people. I don't know. There was a time I almost began challenging my own philosophy of the Catholic Church. When someone dies, we pray for so many hours for God to forgive that person. That means God was annoyed with that person. That means God gets annoyed. That also means that God is not so forgiving unless we pray for so many hours. <laughs> I have come to give a public lecture. I also want to be lectured. What is the characteristic of God in the Old Testament? God is forgiving. Are we trying to say the Protestant philosophy of celebrating the life of someone because they say there is nothing we can do. You have already finished. No amount of prayers can change the wrongs you have done. Yet the Catholic philosophy say we should pray to God for forgiveness. These areas need to be explored and resolved. The fourth extreme of religion in Africa is brought by capitalism. Before the Iron Curtain fell in 1991, the world was having a cold war competing between communist Russia and the U U U United States. So the period in which the Cold War ended, when socialism and capitalism ended, is the same time, I mean, when socialism ended, is about the same time that capitalism came. I have come to believe that the biggest enemy of religion is capitalism. I need to be advised otherwise. Because now people are striving for the individual wealth, for the primitive accumulation of individual wealth as opposed to the collective good. If you go to Romania, you go to parts of Eastern Europe, to Russia, you can see massive and huge infrastructures that were built under the communism re regime. So now the world, the Iron Curtain turned and capitalism came into, into, into play. Capitalism, what are the rules? Profit, everyone is a product, everyone is an item for sale. How much do you earn? That is the essence of capitalism. When we were growing up, the Catholic Church was so strong, people would contribute decima, people would, there would be huge crusader groups, even in big functions, ordination of priests, you would even need lorries to collect gifts and arms. But under the capitalist era, people are minding their own business. What will I eat? I'm not going to spend so much time in the church. So it looks like capitalism is an enemy of Christianity. So the extremes of capitalism can be found now in Matthew 7, verse 15 to 20, where they warn you, beware of false prophets. We now have churches that are being opened strictly for the purpose of business. Now, this is absurd in the African continent. Our government in Uganda has agreed Uganda shall be a secular state and we shall not adopt a state religion. But we have churches that are being opened purposely for making profits. The gospel being preached in those churches is now the different gospel from what we know. 
Their most reliable verse of the Bible is the parable of the, the this one where they, they, they buried the thing under the ground, the parable of the, the talents. So they now tell people, if you bury 10,000, you will get blessings. In some churches, people are now being segregated according to financial capacity. Those of 5,000 there, those of 1 million, you sit in the VIP wing, your blessings are special. <laughs> Parliament of Uganda came with a debate that we should regulate anyone opening a church should be having a, de a degree in, philosophy, in theology, the minimum. Because you cannot deceive people in broad daylight. That I give my money to God. I thought everything on earth belongs to God. Even that money belongs to God. If you are running an orphanage at St. Jude, tell me we are contributing for this, to open this library at a local major seminary. That is a good cause. So churches have been opened for personal enrichment. Another extreme of religion in the African continent is that they have resorted to defying the rules of metaphysics that they can perform miracles. <laughs> miracles? You can perform miracles. Every church, every other church is now saying they can make the blind see, they can make the lame walk, they even have artificial lame people coming on the pavilion with one leg and then saying he has walked. When I was young, I just joined university in the year 2000. We saw one who came to the university that he can make the lame walk. So many lame people came. And he said they should bring their clutches and pile them there. That they will burn it so that the lame can walk. And being radical first year students, we told him, you man, let these people first walk and you burn the things later. <laughs> you are going to get into trouble. And no one walks. <laughs> this is where I praise the Catholic philosophy. We have a lot of work to do in people's hearts than making the lame walk. How many lame people are there in this world? We have thousands of people with, with jealousy, with hatred. That is where, that is the raw material for any institution that calls itself religious. We have so few lame people. We have so few, if not 0.1% blind people. Even the requirements in Europe to open any building, you must have provision for easy access for lame people to get in and out of the building. It is a, a standard requirement because they, they have known that we have to live with the lame and the blind. And for you, you open a church, you take one and say, you can make the blind see. And when they don't see, they say you are a non-believer, they throw it back to you. Those are extremes of religion. And what I have noted, there is a re-emergence of traditional African religion. There is re-emergence of traditional African religion. There is a percentage of people that I have, have seen the wicked behavior of religious prophets and pastors. There are some people calling themselves apostles. I thought there were 12 disciples of Jesus. You are now an apostle. Someone anoints himself on his own, he starts putting on, on, white, on white pieces of cloth. The tailor spent so much time knitting those clothes together. The, the, the religious leader looks according to the clothing, not according to the philosophy. So the traditional African religion has re-emerged vehemently in our society. In Nigeria, I was in Nigeria. It's pretty interesting. The God is now at family level. We have people in cassocks going to shrine. It's very strange. And they are now saying, Certain, certain problems are huge. It cannot be solved in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We now need to, we now need to find a, a local way of solving it. Where do I see the churches going in the next 50 years? What I've seen in Europe, capitalism has reached its peak. 
Actually, the Americans are using Uganda and Ethiopia to test the extremes of capitalism. They, they don't want to enter with both, both feet. They want to see how dangerous is capitalism. So Uganda and, and Ethiopia are countries which are top on the experiment list. If you read the books of Joseph Stilke, these contents of globalization, in his preface, Stilke said, he, prefer, he, he prays he lives long to see what would happen to Uganda and Ethiopia. To the answer, his unanswered questions on extremes of capitalism. Here everything is privatized. The state is privatized, the state gets annoyed, the state catches cold, religion is privatized, security is privatized, everything in Uganda is privatized. Tell me anything that is not privatized. So, what I see in Europe with privatization, the churches are empty. People don't pray. So the churches in Europe are empty, and uh, in the next 50 years, I see the gospel should be taken by the black man to Europe. They brought it to us, they have lost it, we have to take it back. <laughs> so if you are thinking of spreading the gospel, it's not going to 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 or to go or to win or to patao. No, the gospel may have to get to Europe through you. I see that. The gospel has been vulgarized. There is a man I admire, he's a theo theologian, he's called Bishop Maponga. He's in South Africa. He's, you need also to, to, to read his work. He's very intelligent. In Spain, he say, muy intelligent. And he says, he's from South Africa. They have their version of the gospel because the white man took away all the land. So they had to customize Christianity to suit their fight to get land back from the white. So religion should solve a problem. It should not be in the abstract. If Jesus lived now, there would be WhatsApp and YouTube in the Bible. So Bishop Maponga, I call him Bishop, this, this kind of bishop from the Presbyterian Church. He says, they are gaining, they are gaining that aspect of Christianity that makes the white man superior. Next time you invite me, for, for, for a debate that was passionate in one of my YouTube videos. In God made man in his own image. And he has not been contested that the oldest man was in East Africa called the divine God. That means the image of God, God, the first man was black, it automatically tells you the color of God. <laughs> Dr. Leakey published a whole book on the evolution of human beings. And Richard Hawkins, that died nearly six years ago, also wrote something. It is because of the Big Bang and the continental drift that certain species moved away from other parts of the world. And all of the million years, because there is no sun, they lost their color. When you look at a white man, there is no melanin in that skin. Even when you look at the monkeys in Europe, they are also white. It's because of melody. And when you go to the supermarkets you want to buy mango, they are not yellow, they are pink. I know this is very controversial. It may, it may not make you sleep, but it has not been contested. So, because of capitalism, we are seeing churches being empty, we are seeing the, the church is being turned into a business. However, the churches in Europe have adapted themselves. Churches are now not only for Eucharistic celebrations. Churches in Europe are now rehabilitation centers. Counseling. Those of you who become priests, it's not everything, it's not going to be in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. No. They have counseling centers when you come, marriage counseling telling you not to do abortion, alcohol and smoking addicts, there is a section where they take you there for counseling. Actually in Europe now, if a child collapses, they build it overnight. They take a little more time building it. They build it very fast because they need more churches than police stations. If the church is to remain relevant to the human species, 
if religion is to remain relevant to the human species, they must adapt to the realities of today. And the reality of today is that the human species has evolved. Knowledge has been, has, has been garnered in abundance. Any religion must encourage hard work. Any religion must encourage forgiveness. Every, any religion must encourage respect. Any religion, whether Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, or traditional African religion, must encourage human dignity. I have met people in Europe who are very good and they are not religious. You are going to find them in heaven. They are so kind, they are very courteous. They give a helping hand. So that means there is also another way if you can meet this tenant. As Jesus said, love your, do, do to your neighbor what you expect to be done unto you. So there are people also who are not religious who will find them in heaven. That is if heaven is a physical location. That is for another day. <laughs> and as I sit and entertain questions, still on the philosophy and theology of Bishop Maponga, he made two observations in the Bible, which is food for thought. He said when Jesus appeared to the disciples, when he reappeared, when he resurrected and made an appearance, the disciples were together in one room, right? They were scared. The whole world wanted a piece of their flesh. So when Jesus came, he appeared in the room. Am I right? He appeared from the roof. Now read the Bible again. And who was the first to see? Which disciple was the first to see before calling others? Pardon? Pardon? Okay, you will double check. Don't, don't fail your philosophy exam. But Bishop Apongai said, the disciple, the first disciple to see Jesus came and said, come, come and see Christ. He has resurrected. And they all ran upstairs. Upstairs is bold, underlined, and caps lock. Which meant the disciples were hard working. They were not poor. They were not living in non storage buildings 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so he's saying the Bible calls for hard work. You are not just going to be here. You don't want to dig. You don't want to listen to your lecturers. You don't want to do any compound work, cleanliness, and then you say, happy is the and the poor, there is the kingdom of heaven. The Bible calls for hard work, read between the lines. Those are the opinions of Bishop Maponga, not my opinion. And lastly, he also made another interesting observation. When Jacqueus, the tax collector, and Jesus said, Jacqueus, I'm coming to your home. What happened after that? Jacqueus said, if there is anyone who owes any money, that they think he got it unlawfully, he will refund it. Is that a characteristic of a poor man? If you read the Bible again, is that a characteristic of a poor man? So the Christianity encourages hard work. So in the next 50 years, when I will be 95 years old, I see Africans would have had enough of these false prophets and they will come back in line to the well-structured philosophical religion. As of now, they are still overwhelmed. How can, how can God, how can God put on military fatigue? How? So religion has been... My views are my views. It's, I have traded from very dangerous areas, given my background in political science, and then a little background in law, and then also in the aspects of philosophy. My role to come to this seminar is to provoke discussions. Is to provoke discussions. Because I said earlier, religion without knowledge is stupidity. That is why, if you read the works of Nietzsche, it's a very incredible piece of legislation. We are all struggling. What are my personal beliefs? My personal belief is that there is God calling him by any name. 
Whether you call it Allah, whether you call it roses, there is a God. That is my personal belief. All these creatures on earth cannot be a coincidence. There has to be a God. My second belief that God sends people with powers on earth to do works on their behalf. And one of them is Jesus, another one is Muhammad. You can name them. Even the doctor treating people in UIN Center 3 is doing the work of God. Even the work Reverend is coming all the way from Kabare to Gulu is doing the work of God. God works through man. That is my philosophy. Going to church to me is for fellowship. I can talk to God direct. I don't need a middleman. I don't need an intercessor. So when I go to the public domain, it's fellowship, fundraising, drive, and encouraging others. So God works through man. But also Satan works through man. Because we read in the Bible that there was a war in heaven and it was not resolved until it was sent to earth. <laughs> so Satan is also here on earth. We have tamed animals. We have caged them in zoos. We can kill elephants as we want. Human beings ride on the back of camels. Human civilization is not threatened by animals. Even the COVID-19 vaccine, we contained it as human beings. But what we have failed to contain is fellow human beings. So the same way God came on earth, also Satan is on earth. And the Satan on earth, my personal conviction, is not that one you see in the ceiling board of Guru Cathedral. You saw, it has a long tongue, the tongue is spitting fire, the nails are like this, the tails are up to there. You saw that drawing. That is not the Satan which is there on earth. The Satan on earth is the one putting on the suits, the one wearing the latest perfume, the one driving the best cars. So maybe one day, when one of you becomes the Archbishop and the Pope, some of those drawings may have to be altered because Satan comes in a very organized way. <laughs> no, not in a very not in a very scary way. Actually when we were growing, many of us accepted Christianity because we were scared of Satan. Religion should not get people by coercion or threats. If you don't do this, you are going to go to hell. That is intimidation. <laughs> Religion should find a better way of collecting people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'll sit and take questions. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Presenter. Today, in the lecture room, we said man has a natural desire, inclination, to believe to God. And uh, I am glad the continuation of my lecture is this afternoon. And uh, you made many good points, which I think are also challenging to our own situation as uh, future priests and pastors. Because I was trying to look at uh, how the region is being globalized, how capitalism is trying to overrun the church. Probably also in our church today, how we judge who come, those who come to pray, and we begin to earmark the front seats according to what one is offered. And we forget about the disposition of the worshippers. It is a challenge. At this juncture, we are to have questions and remarks. I will take three, four questions at a golden owner who will just respond. My dear brothers in this uh, great opportunity of discussion.
you like making reference, and let me make reference to those who have known Professor Mondin. Probably you have gotten it, copies of his books in a library where he, he did a lot about the philosophy of man. And he says man is an already and not yet. From time immemorial, even during the Socratic times, you know, great thinkers approached the people in the streets and explained their minds to the people. Open debate. And this culture is very prominent in the most educational institutions in the West. I don't know whether I'm correct. A university should be able to host public lectures. And if we are to move together with the world in, in, in as far as intellectual development is concerned, there is no way we can avoid also public lectures in our institution. So by your coming, you give us a character. You know, you give us identity that we are also an institution that is capable of you know, hosting these public lectures. And we pray that it continue coming over and again. As an institution of, of uh, philosophy, I think we have to have an outlook. And most of the time this word is used. Philosophy, philosophy, philosophical, whatever has to do with the philosophy as to lead to the truth. I have to point this also before the, the presenter. Because sometimes propaganda becomes also a philosophy. Uh, sometimes uh, mere, mere oratory becomes also philosophical. In that case then I get confused. What is philosophy? But my understanding is uh, what is philosophical is should gear to the truth, to the proper understanding, to objectivity. The positions that are clear, then that will be something that we refer to, to be philosophical. You can't have a discourse, I believe tomorrow man you will win, then you say you are philosophical in such a case. <laughs> so, you are a, a doctoral uh, student, and as you were presenting, I was also asking, your point was religious extremism in Africa. Then, people have asked the question, if there is extremism in Africa, where is the fundamental problem? And I think we were, we were struggling together to find whether running to the Bible or where, to, where we should have recourse. But from me, I would say, the problem is the human mind. That when the human mind is not okay, because we have intoxicated the human mind, then we, we tend to believe and to live in our actions like, like intoxicated people. We have discussed, the presentation has been successfully made, we have shared together, and it is a struggle. From now on, we continue reflecting. We continue implementing what we, what we can. What we can. But always where you are, try to sharpen your outlook to things. By use of that logic, philosophy is not abstract. It is very, 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 very contextual. And I quote to you one of the church dignitaries in Uganda, uh, the other one, oh, the former Nunzio. One time when I was going to, to, to study in Rome, he told me, what are you going to study? I said, Your Excellency, I'm going to study philosophy. Then he said, yes, for me, I believe that the problems in this world, if all people were philosophical, if all people you know, grasp philosophy, then the problems of this world, other than theology, that's the, I'm quoting him, that it is philosophy other than necessarily theology that will solve the problems of this world. I think when he came here, he repeated it also, that uh, when he came to talk to us, the staff.
So this is not to take position which is superior and so on. We know that philosophy is the anime of theology. It is a means of unlocking that which is hidden to the extent of our human limitation. Because what we call human knowledge also before God is a limited knowledge. And so with what we can, philosophy helps us to do our best with a little bit of the enlightenment that we have to remove where mysteries should not be so that we are realistic and that is the mission of Christ there who came that we may have life, we may have abundance. Thank you, presenter. God should guide you when you go. When you get back to that place, we shall continue exchanging mails here and there. I have never seen your website. I have never seen your... But I believe I will have time to go and be checking and be edified by some of these international issues that you have today help us to understand. Thank you so much.